again, this is part of a series of videos. Uh, be sure to check out the full playlist. There should be an annotation on the screen or a link in the description of the video to the full playlist. And we're gonna be adding on to stuff we've already done. We've already gone over creating maps and placing markers. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at um, clicking on the map, getting that location, and then placing a marker on the map like so. So we're just gonna go with the default Google marker this time around which is the same as placing the custom marker, just not telling it to use a certain image. So that's it, I can still drag and click someplace else. So let's go ahead and look at that code. And a majority of it's the same. We're gonna be uh, creating the map just like we have in the past. We've got our, our empty div tag here, our empty element that we've given an idea of map canvas. You don't have to call it that, but that's what we're calling it. And we're gonna call that in our function up here. And again, uh, we're creating a variable for our coordinates, which is where our map's going to be centered at. And then here we're saying when the map, when the page is loaded, when the window is loaded, everything's loaded, run our initialize function. So our initialize function up here, we're saying, okay, we're going to create a map. We're going to give it options. Uh, so I changed things a little bit from last time. Last time I did a zoom of 15, a map, uh, I think I did road maps. This time we're doing terrain. And then we're centering the map on this variable center which we created up here which is based on these coordinates. So that's creating the map, centering the map, zooming into a certain type and a uh, certain depth and uh, telling it what type of map to create. All stuff we've gone over in the past. Uh, so that, that's the options. Here we're actually going to create the map object. We're going to say new Google Maps and so remember when it's saying new Google Maps or Google Maps we're using the Google API from up here that we imported uh, and again, my code is free and open source for you to use, but realize that we are using some code that is not necessarily free as in freedom. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And we're using services that are a service that someone's provided. And anytime someone's providing a service for you and you're not doing it yourself, that can always be taken away. And there are restrictions, limitations. Always keep that in mind. Um, okay, so we're going to say create this object, this map. We're creating a map. We're going to create it. So we're going to look at our document, our entire ob, uh, page, get the elements. That's our div tag down here. And we're going to pass it these options right here. OK, so that's creating it. Next, we need to create a listener. Basically, a listener is going to listen for an event. And in this case, we're going to say, OK, look at our Google map. We're going to be listening for an event on this map object, okay? So we're listening for that, and there's different types of events. You know, it could be a key down or other stuff. We're gonna say, if the map is clicked. So right here we're saying which map, which is our map right here. When it's clicked, we're gonna run a function, and we're gonna get what event, uh, we're gonna pass the information that was passed to it as event, and then here we're going to say, okay, now that we've realized the map has been clicked and we've grabbed that information, uh, we are now going to run the function place marker, but we're going to pass it the event latitude and longitude. So this is saying, okay, the map was clicked. There's lots of information about that map and where it was clicked, but in this particular case, we want the formatted latitude and longitude. We're going to pass that to our function down here. And we're going to call that location. So basically, we're saying that latitude and longitude, we're now calling location. Uh, and then we're going to say, well, we're going to create a variable on our uh, object here called marker. Again, we're going to use the Google API JavaScript to create a marker, just as we've done in previous uh, tutorials. This time, we're not going to give it an icon. In the previous ones, we gave it icon. We told it what image to use. So since we're not giving it an icon, it's going to go to the default red bubble icon. We're telling it which map to use. So that's our, our map that we created up here. And we're gonna pass it its position, which is location, which is the variable here of where we clicked. And that is it. Um, so basically, this is very similar to what we've done when we created a marker and placed it, except for we're listening for a click and then grabbing that event information and passing it to a new function that creates the marker. Again, you can do this with custom icons. So again, here, let me refresh this page. It centers, it zooms, it sets it to a terrain. As you can see, it's showing elevation, I guess, and 
and water stuff, but it's still showing streets. And I can click different places and place markers. And a lot can be done uh, with this. If we look at another example here, um, icon placement. This is a little script that I've been having. I just started working on it just for fun. I have very low resolution icons here. Uh, they're a little blown up. Um, but I have a fire, an IFF logo here and a fire logo. And I figure you can have a bunch of icons up there and you know on a laptop or a tablet or a phone you can have okay I'm gonna place this here and that represents you know where the fire station is and I can click up here right now I have no notification telling you what object you've clicked it up there but I can go oh there is a fire here and it's spread to over there you know and then I can click up here and I can have a picture of a fire engine or whatever icons I want and I can go okay okay then there was a fire truck here and we had another one placed over here with all these different icons and I thought that that would be uh, useful you know as uh, my day job being a firefighter uh, we can have um, reviews of fires after which we normally do when someone draws on a chalkboard they make a pretty poorly drawn map and draw where the fire is and all stuff and I just thought that maybe if we got if I got a series of icons up here it could make it a little more um, useful and clean and of course that's uh, something that um, i just kind of playing around with now but we'll probably work a little bit more on in the future add a bunch of icons add remove functionality uh, and a few other things but very simple very easy to use you can do satellite view and see where the fire was oh it was all up in these trees here you know and then another We'll say this is a fire truck. Another fire truck was here and there, and then we moved one around here. So, just ideas of what you could do with this. And of course, you know, you could real time when you add stuff, upload that to your own personal server, uh, which can then be linked to other devices. So, I could have a thousand people looking at this application, and I could be adding stuff, and within seconds, if not immediately, it goes out to all their devices. So that's just a thought. Anyway, I thank you for watching this. Again, I hope you're enjoying this series. If you enjoyed this video and the series, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, as always, I hope that you visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And be sure to check out the rest of the playlist if you haven't. And I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to FilmsByChris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.